Well, hello, boys and girls. I have a little something I want to talk to you about real quick and a couple of things I want to tell you. As you can see, I've changed uh, reading glasses again. I'm going to tell you why I did that. A real good friend of mine that I've known all my life came down to see me last weekend, came over here from Tuscaloosa. And uh, he got on to me for some of the uh, reading glasses I'd been wearing. It had the little size sticker still on the uh, lens up there. And I do that because I have about four or five uh, different uh, strengths that I wear, just depending on how my eyes are that day. And uh, he, he said he, that surely that I knew that that thing was on there, and which I did, but I just have them to where I can uh, put one pair on, and if they don't work, I can say, well, the 200s are not working today, and go to the uh, 125s or whatever I need to go to. But I've, I got me a, a pair, and I took the uh, sticker off of these. These maybe look a little bit better than those other ones I had on. So anyway, I wanted to uh, explain that real quick, and I really appreciated uh, David. That was his name. I won't tell his whole name. Uh, coming down last weekend it was real good to see him once again hadn't seen him in probably 50 years but anyway he keeps up with us on uh, youtube and that type of stuff so anyway what i do want to talk to you about tonight the reason i got my reading glasses on because i've got me some notes made i uh, did this video earlier than at horseshoe bend now that they finally opened the park the park's been closed for nearly a month and uh, i rode down there this afternoon and i did the video but i left a couple of things out so i'm going to redo it here tonight so now that you know what's going on in my life, this is what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> Over the last few weeks, I've been receiving emails and uh, stuff like that through uh, the site and everything about this little three-year-old boy that went missing up in uh, North Carolina, I believe in uh, Craven County, North Carolina, I believe is what it was called. But anyway, uh, he uh, was out playing with uh, some other children one afternoon, and these other children are so I have seen on YouTube came back into the house and when uh, granny asked where the little boy was they had left him outside and they hunted and hunted they couldn't find him and of course they called the uh, authorities and law enforcement to see if they could help, help, him, help find him that afternoon in which they finally did but anyway whenever they found the little boy here a few days ago uh, he uh, told his uh, the people that found him that he had been hanging out with a bear and uh, you know, that kind of sounds a little odd, a little strange that a bear would uh, treat a child like that. I'm not saying that it wouldn't, uh, but it's kind of sounded a little bit strange to me. And, and as some other folks have uh, are thinking or have brought up, could it have possibly been a Bigfoot? And it possibly could have been. Uh, there's another possibility of something else it could have been, and I'll get to that in just a few minutes as we go through the video. They said the uh, little boy was found about a quarter of a mile from where he went missing. And this was like two or three days later. Now, you know, as many people as they had up there searching, or so they claim that they had a, an enormous amount of people in there searching for this little boy, surely within a quarter of a mile, they would have found him uh, sooner than about three days. Bad thing about it, they said the temperatures plummeted up there one or two nights to like 17 degrees, and then it kind of warmed up some and it went to raining. And I remember on one of the videos I watched a reporter asked the man that found him uh was he wet when he found him and he said yes he was soaked said everything out there was soaked so that would also lead, lead you to believe that if this child had been out there uh in the elements by himself without some type of protection then uh he, he would have certainly died in 17 degree weather and then being soaking wet that's why it makes me think that it's very possibly a, a bigfoot possibly a female bigfoot uh, to me would be more than a male because of the uh, uh, mother instincts that uh, uh, female parents have. And uh, this thing could have had some uh, other young. There could have been several young out there, whether like cubs or something, or whatever you want to call a young uh, Bigfoot. But anyway, just something I want to bring up and uh, get your opinion about. Uh, the man that found him, I can't remember his name, but anyway, he said that when he found him, he was tangled up in some briars and uh, brambles out there, and it took a little bit to get him untangled. He did have a few cuts and places like that on him where the briars had cut into him. Now, what I'm wondering here, and you think about this too, did this Bigfoot place him in that uh, briar, in those briars or brambles, whatever it was, to, to kind of hold him down to where he couldn't run off? Maybe she'd had trouble, or he or she had had trouble keeping up with this child and uh, getting it back to where it could be found, and maybe that's why it placed it in a uh, briar patch so he couldn't move around very much until his rescuers did find him. Uh, that uh, uh, it could have possibly placed him there. Uh, it uh, more than likely bears. Well, one of my other notes right here that I was looking at reading real quick 
bears are, I believe, hibernating this time of year in uh, North Carolina and uh, the Appalachian Mountains up that way. Uh, so that makes you wonder, was it a bear? Uh, a bear is going to be sleeping, hibernating. Now, let's talk about hibernating just a minute. Hibernating to me is uh, bears are similar to our rattlesnakes down here. Now, we have rattlesnakes that go in dens, holes, wells, just wherever they can find a little warm spot for the winter. And that's where they spend the uh, winter months down here in uh, Alabama. And then when the weather begins to warm up just a little bit, you better be careful if you get out in the woods because these things will bite you. And I mean bite you quick. Anything that moves, they're going to strike it because they don't know what it is. They uh, uh, have just come out of hibernation. I guess they're having a little trouble getting their eyes focused. I know they're hungry. And I believe a bear up there would be hungry too. And that would make uh, it a lot uh, less chance of this child surviving if that bear had been hungry. The bar, if it had been a bear, he probably wouldn't know a human from anything else or care. He would just be hungry, wanting something to eat. So that makes me think that it could possibly be a uh, Bigfoot because Bigfoots, whether you like it or not, or whether you believe it or not, are about half human. So they would have emotions and feelings for this child. Okay, now what uh, I would like some of the uh, researchers up there in North Carolina, and I know some of you up there, some of you I've met through uh, the website and through uh, YouTube and that type of stuff, uh, uh, especially one man, uh, uh, Daniel. That's all I, I, I won't call his last name. He lives in uh, North Carolina. He sent us several pictures of Bigfoot signs and that type of stuff up there in uh, North Carolina. What uh, would be a good idea, I think, and I wish I was up there and, and able to go to where this child was found and look around. You might find some footprints since it has rained pretty hard up there. You might find some hair in uh, some of the... Uh, uh, briars and that type of stuff up there. It would be very good to go up there and check around to see if you see one. The reason I'm saying this, they uh, one of the videos showed a uh, view from uh, a Granny's backyard where the children were playing whenever he went missing. And when they fanned the woods out there with the camera and everything, I could see several Bigfoot signs myself, like bent trees and uh, broken trees, that type of stuff out there. So that leads you to think that uh, Bigfoot are in the area and maybe these Bigfoot were just sitting around watching these kids play that day. They are very curious and uh, they have been known to do uh, me and some other investigators like that when we were out on location looking for them. We have noticed them sitting like off in the distance uh, uh, watching us. Uh, they're like I said, a, a, a very curious animal. Something else I would like for somebody to uh, find out about this family. Does this child, his mother and father, have Indian ancestry. Now, if they do have Indian ancestry, now that's going to explain a lot of this child being returned because uh, Bigfoot are have always been a very close friend or whatever you want to call it to anyone with Indian ancestry. Uh, that, uh, uh, there's one of my other notes. I'm just having to read my notes real quick. Uh, check out the place where, uh, where the child was found. And what I would do, and I know a lot of people laugh at me for saying this, but I talk to these things, and uh, I have told them what I'm going to do, and I have asked them for stuff, and over a period of time, uh, they have done what I've asked them. They have brought me gifts and that type of stuff. I have a, a complete video on here about the uh, Bigfoot uh, uh, trading post. You might want to watch that sometime. Not that I'm trying to advertise my uh, videos on here, but uh, it certainly works. What I, what I would like for someone to do is to go out there to where this child was found, in the briar patch, or whatever, wherever it was, Take something out there for this uh, Bigfoot to eat that you would like to trade with it, or maybe not to eat, maybe something shiny or something that you think a Bigfoot would like to have, and go out there and tell whoever you are uh, if you did help uh, save this child's life and uh, bring it back to us to where we could find it, I'm leaving you this gift. Could you leave me something in return so I will know that it's you? Now go out there by yourself and don't tell everybody you're going or somebody will go out there and have a big hoax and a big laugh about it. But you might be surprised what you get. You might get a feather. You might get a rock. You might get a big piece of bark. I have received things like I've received bones, uh, uh, a lot of stuff over the years that I have received trading with Bigfoot. And this could very well work if you rewarded this Bigfoot for, uh, uh, helping, uh, the, for helping in the rescue of this child. Now, I know a lot of, <clears throat> I'm getting sort of, I guess it's allergies down here now that, the weather's warmed up today down here. It's, it, it's just like summertime down here today. But I know a lot of people, especially church-going people, are going to say Bigfoot or Nephilim. 
that's all it is. It's evil. Oh, it's of the devil. And I get so tired. That's why I just quit going to church. Everything was of the devil. So anyway, uh, some of them are. Some of them could be. I mean, I'm not saying that they are, but now some of them may be, but not all. Some of them are, uh, are from outer space. Uh, they were brought here by aliens placed here on this planet to uh, work and do other tasks that the, the aliens needed to be done that they didn't want to do or that they couldn't do. Or some of them have always been here. That's just the thing about it. Uh, there's always been Bigfoot here. It may not be all the same kind, but Bigfoot's been here for a long time. And some Bigfoot are interdimensional or whatever you want, dimensional or interdimensional, whatever you want to call it, because I have seen them like walk, take a step, disappear, and then you would see them taking a, a back step or another step, and they would reappear. I have seen that myself, so I know that. Uh, that they can be dimensional just because you might say well that don't apply to our law of physics that those don't go along with that well the law of physics I figure was written by some man and he probably didn't know his butt from a hole in the ground he was just making up something to sound important and try to get in some history books and the math books and that type of stuff you can't always go by what's logical and what's uh, uh, science tells you there are other things going on in this world and this is one of them that I'm going to tell you now this may have not have been a bear this may not have been a Bigfoot. What if it was an angel? And oh, I know now I'm going to get a lot of flack from the church. Oh, the angels are not covered in hair and they don't look like bears and all this kind of stuff. Well, just shut your mouth and listen to what I got to say and then you can comment. Uh, I know that gets back to shape shifting and that type of stuff. But I believe that God has the power to do anything he wants to do. That he can do anything he wants to do. And if he sends a guardian angel down here that he wants to look like an angel with wings and a halo, that's his business and that's what he'll do. But if he might have thought this child would be more comfortable with maybe a teddy bear or something like that that he was more familiar with, then I figured that that's what God done. He changed this angel into look uh, to something that wouldn't frighten this child. Now, whether you like that or not or whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter to me one way or the other. That's just my opinion. And that's the way, and I'm like Clint Eastwood. Everybody's got one and that's mine. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, say this right quick because I, I was concerned about this child when I heard about it. I'm real glad that it's been found. It's been, I think he's been found a little over a week ago now. But I do have some good friends up there, and uh, some of you might want to check into uh, uh, doing a little investigating down there to see if it was Bigfoot. So I'll get out of here now and leave you all alone, and I'll be looking for you next time on the next Alabama Adventure.